How's it going folks? Posted a bit of a walk around clip of our yard a couple of weeks back, three or four weeks ago, and I had a couple of people message me asking how the front yard's going, and I've also missed a couple of bits down the back, so I thought I'd just fill in the gaps today, uh, maybe have a little bit of a quick look at how the fish are going. So, anyway, we'll start out here at the front. The asparagus in these front beds are still going gangbusters. Uh, last night we took off a couple of tips for a bit of a um, platter dinner we had. Um, so we're still harvesting bits and pieces here and there. We did have a situation where I basically forgot to feed them. Um, I wasn't feeding them with the compost tea weekly as we were previously and the um, spear rate did slow down but over the last three or four weeks I've started to feed them a lot more and yeah we're starting to get the smaller spears come through. Down the base here as well, we have our little cayenne pepper plant. This little cayenne pepper is still going gangbusters. Um, I don't know, well, you can probably see all the red there. There's a whole heap of green ones, new fruit coming on as well. Um, that's just what's hanging over the bed. Up the top here, we've got a whole heap more up in there as well. So absolutely loaded with fruit. Whenever we have visitors come around to have a bit of a look at the garden, we always try and give them as many as we can. Uh, we've got uh, a whole heap drying on the plant as well, like this one here. Uh, people are taking them to grow their own. But absolutely wrapped in this one, just a volunteer. I think the seed originally came from Sean um, down in South Australia. So yeah, I'm just blown away by this. We get, uh, we've got the Argy Amarillos and the market chilies out the back as well. So between the three plants, more chilies than we'll ever use in a year, I think. The third bed along is our perpetual spinach bed. We also had a couple of onions in there as well. I found a small one the other day um, just up the back that had already dried off. I think I've made a few mistakes with the onions this year. I planted them a little bit too deep. Um, I've never had much luck with onions and I think that's why I'm planting the seedlings too deep. Um, we've got a little uh, beetroot down the front there, a little golden beetroot. Uh, I've left three in around the place trying to get them to go to seed. It's just not happening, so yeah, I've pretty much all lost cause here, I think, for trying to save seed from them. Also, too, the perpetual spinach will be coming out. I've got uh, one load of corn in at the moment, and this will be our next lot of corn, this bed here. So these guys will come out, and I'll start off some more perpetual spinach down the back. Over in the next bed, we have our only surviving tomato plant at this point in time. The broad ripple yellow currant tomato in this bed is going to be trimmed back. It's already been trimmed back a few times because I want to plant a few other bits and pieces in here. Just down the front, I've got a couple of, there should be three cow peas down there. We haven't tried that sort of bean variety before, so we'll have a crack at that. And over in the back corner here, we have a crepe myrtle. Um, that's a tree that was planted in this um, garden years ago. We keep getting shoots pop up, so I've got to trim them back before they become a bit of an um, invasive pest again. Just over here at Kira's bed, we don't have a lot of action really. Uh, the carrots have, that was in here that went to flower, I've saved a lot of the seed. Unfortunately, I lost the clip I filmed um, saving those seeds, but I do have some of the flower heads um, set aside, so I might be able to film another clip. Um, but just down the front here, we have her French marigolds that went to seed. And up the back is a couple of volunteer Thai basil. Um, they just grew all the way through winter. Uh, I've been putting a lot of them in the um, little rice paper rolls, the veggie rice paper rolls. I put two or three of the leaves down the center and then wrap the veggies in. Absolutely fantastic. I love the really crisp flavor these guys have. So it's great to have at least one little stand of this around the place. This bed here is our corn bed, uh, corn max. I just planted them out the other day. Um, when they get about a foot tall, I'll plant out some more in the perpetual spinach bed, and that way we'll have a, a rotation of corn coming through. We won't get a glut uh, come to harvest all at once. So that's the idea behind that. There's about 50 seedlings in there, actually. Um, I put 25 holes in, staggered them around, two corn in each one, so roughly 50 plants in there. This next bed over here just has a sugarcane plant in it and also a rock melon. Um, germinated just over in the back corner there. It's a volunteer. Uh, we had rock melon growing out the front here last year and yeah, basically this one's just sprouted up from a rotten fruit. Um, it's not a very sweet variety, so I think it's um, offspring from a hybrid, so it's reverted back to one of its um, parents' uh, varieties. Basically, it's not a very sweet fruit. It does have a full-on rock melon flavour, though. It's been going great in our smoothies. We harvested one the other day. Um, unfortunately, the first one had split on the base, but the second one was fantastic. And we do have a few more on it. There's one over there hiding in the back corner. And there's one down the back, down the side there. I'm not going to dig around to try and get. Uh, there's another little one there. And there's a couple down in here. 
Um, they're not the most impressive looking one. This one here looks like he's got a bit of a um, sailor's delight, a bit of a sunken chest. Um, there's one there, decent sized one, and a couple, oh, one over in that corner and another one up there. So it's a pretty prolific plant. One thing I have noticed though, it, it isn't susceptible to powdery mildew, like a lot of the other melons we have. It is susceptible, however, to the 28 spot ladybug larvae. So there's a couple on here having a bit of a field day, so I'm gonna come back and squish all these guys later. Uh, but overall, um, even though it's not a sweet variety, like I said, it's fantastic in the juices. In that bed, end bed over there, we just have a couple of volunteer um, turmeric that have popped up. I moved the rest out the back, so I'm not really doing a lot with that bed at the moment. I could probably throw some beans in there, I think. The banana tree, it has decided to flower. So we're really stoked with that. They got some awesome looking flowers, very spectacular. Uh, a couple of people on Instagram mentioned that I can eat the flower, uh, something I have seen before. You always end up with a big gap between the last set of fruit and the flower down the bottom with these lady fingers. So we're gonna knock off this flower and we'll cook it up in some way and see how that goes. This onion barrel here, it had probably about 12 onions in it to begin with. Some of them have rotted off, as you can see, but the, the majority of them did fine. I think we got about eight or so out of there, lost about four. My problem is, like I said before, I'm planting them too deep, but yeah, we've got three left there. One not so impressive, but the other two are, you know, decent sized onions. Pretty chuffed about that. Also have a couple of seed starts on the go. We have some golden purslane. These guys here will end up with a larger leaf than the normal native variety. We also have some ice plant um, sent to me by Steve. Thank you very much, mate. It's, a, it's used as a green, also used in tea, so it'd be interesting to see how that one turns out. I uh, have a couple of dwarf tomatoes on the go as well. Um, summertime Dwarf Gold, also have a Bundaberg Rum Ball, um, not even going to try and pronounce that one, and the other one that hasn't done much chop so far is the Totem Dwarf, so such is. Uh, this punnet here, we have some Brain Tomato, um, never seen these guys myself, but I've only pictures online, and also some Mexican Midget. And this one over here, which is, um, there you go, that's the name of it. Thanks, Richard. Um, these guys here grow in a massive hand of little small red cherry tomatoes. So really looking forward to having some decent varieties, different to what we've got already. Down the base here, we have some Gallingal. I started off from seed last year. Now, these guys are doing fairly well. Uh, they really do need to go out, so I'm going to put them in an air pruning pouch as soon as I get to some of the other garden stuff organised. Just a bit of um, asparagus start as well. This has just started from a seed that I picked off our ferns out the front. Um, over here, oh, I've, I've forgotten the zucchini. I've also got the zucchini from Ruben, so thank you very much for that, mate. Um, over here, we have... The last of the Yakon. Um, this plant here is um, the last one I've got. It's got a bit of a curling on the leaf. Um, uh, they're the only two pots there of the Yakon that didn't um, sprout. This curling of the leaf is a bit of a worry. Uh, I was speaking to Nathan online. Um, Nathan's got something similar. Looks like it could be tobacco mosaic virus. Um, I do know I've had some other viral issues in the past here. So actually I'll show you the other um, Yakon. This is the other yak on here, and as you can see, the leaves are cupped. They're not their normal large arrow-shaped leaf. So, to begin with, I thought it was a nutrient deficiency when it happened last year. Um, someone pointed out that it could have been a fungal root rot issue, uh, but it looks like it could end up being a viral thing. Nathan's pretty much well um, pinned his, um, which is doing the same thing, on tobacco mosaic virus. What I can do is just harvest this, not um, grow from the, uh, the little rhizomes that you normally propagate it from, just eat the tubers and just be done with it, get it out of the garden so it doesn't spread the virus any further. Um, that's pretty much all what I think I will end up doing with it um, because I really don't want this stuff going around. I mean, I've lost uh, some celery in the aquaponics to it, also the beans, the climbing beans, they look like they've got some sort of a viral infection. And actually I noticed in one of the potato barrels yesterday, I got some curling of the leaf. Those potatoes are well and truly ready to harvest, so I'm not too concerned about them. Um, I'll just pretty much well pull those spuds and we'll eat them, won't save any for seed. Just while we're here, the pawpaw. The pawpaw is doing rather well. I'm pretty impressed with it. I've been doing a bit of an experiment though. I cut out the compost tea. I was feeding it weekly with compost tea. And if you can make out here, above this fruit here, we have had no more set. 
and we've just started to get some decent looking flowers start to form up the top there now I uh, started to feed it compost tea again last week so what I think it basically because it's in this barrel it's the air pruning wicking barrel I made up last year uh, basically because it's in here we need to keep feeding it compost teas and nutrients because there definitely wouldn't be enough in there to sustain a tree like this uh, this tree gets to three meters eventually so it does need some sort of other sustenance uh, just to keep it going as you can see we've got one ripening up so that be our second ripe one we would have picked from here. A um, bit of an experiment, we'll see how we go. I'm going to leave it in there for now and see if we can get um, some a decent harvest of it just by giving it a liquid feed every week or so. There we go, a bit of a look at their pawpaw. Pretty chuffed with it to tell you the truth. Down here in the little air pruning wicking garden, we got some awesome growth going on. This basil's just flown away. Also too, the sweet potato up the back, it's already halfway up the trellis I've made, just a wire one. Uh, the cucumbers, they haven't found it yet, but as soon as they do, they'll take off, I think. Down the front here, we have some weeds in the pavers, <laughs> uh, purse lane actually. We have some capsicums, or aka sweet peppers, a couple of them down the front, another one down there. Uh, this shallot bag isn't doing too well, so I'm thinking about putting one of these um, capsicums in there, see how it goes. Another capsicum up the back. The thyme died. I just don't think the roots found the water um, and it dried out so I've popped a capsicum in there but all in all you know I'm pretty impressed with the way it's going still haven't got any rocks down in the base there um, we've been sidetracked with family things while Bianca's been on holidays but well, I'm not too worried about the mosquitoes breeding down there uh, as soon as I notice a, a wriggler's down there I just let all the water be sucked up by the pouches it dries out the wrigglers die and then I can fill it up with water again yeah not going too bad at all really pretty impressed with the growth just over here at the Moringa, a couple of days after, I think it might have even actually been the day after I posted the last video, we had a pretty wild storm cell come through southeast Queensland here. Um, it made the news in a few places around the world apparently. But we had one casualty and it was the poor old Moringa tree. Basically it ended up laying down flat, um, it just got smashed. So what I've done is I've grabbed a couple of bits of hose that we use as clamps on the hoop house out the back, drilled some hold in them, holes in them, sorry put some baling twine through it and connected one lot to the fence and another to the compost cage beside me here and that's pretty much all just holding the tree up. I've had a look at a couple of clips online, um, I've seen people propagate them by branches and seed, uh, Paul Life in Thailand, his channel, he's um, tried to propagate some, so some of these branches may be coming off and we'll try and grow some more. Not too wrapped in the leaves, um, in the flavour of the leaves, but the, the bean pods are what I'm really hanging out for, just haven't had any set yet. So, yeah, as soon as they come and I have a bit of a taste, we'll, you know, we'll decide whether we're going to keep it as a vegetable plant or not. The water chestnuts have been taken over by grass weeds this year, so I'm not too sure what sort of a harvest we're going to get from them. Um, <laughs> I've learned my lesson though, next year I'll start off with all brand new soil and we'll take it from there. So with these guys, whatever we harvest, I'll try and save probably a dozen or so of the large corms. Um, won't be able to give any away this year, I don't think. Uh, just depending on the harvest and I'll just start off a fresh new soil probably in a new position as well might put another garden bed in here but yeah so there's a bit of a look at how the um, weedy water chestnuts are going just at the end of the water chestnut bathtub here we have a wicking barrel it had a bell chili in it uh, that passed on poor plant and also some sweet potato vine I emptied it out and harvested all the sweet potatoes and I wanted to rework it so as you can see it's got the old fill tube and single pipe reservoir doesn't hold a lot of water so I decided just to turf it all out and what I'm going to do is mix through all the sand that was in the reservoir with the soil make a nice loose mix and I'll put a proper donut reservoir in there and you know schmick it all out and it'll become another carrot barrel so I can just blow, uh, grow some carrots in there the free crumbly um, soil just means your carrots will grow nice and deep nice big roots so pretty chuffed with both the harvest and the fact that I've got another carrot barrel to plant out. Just here at the lime tree bed a bit of an idea I've been mucking around with is creating a bit of a makeshift dam slash swale here. I turfed some dirt out just at the end here from Mayer's mint barrel that was underneath the stairs before I changed that all around and I've created a bit of a dam down there. Now what happens is when it rains because the ground slopes down towards this garden bed the water's been collecting down there in the large storms we've had over the last couple of weeks and it's been pooling down the end here. So what I'm trying to do is just slow the water down so it gets to soak into the ground and so it can be taken up by the trees in this bed here and the herbs. So what I'm going to do is come along and take a hammer and chisel to this tin front 
totally remove it and build out the garden bed a little bit further into the, the yard and going to try and create a sort of a swale um, situation so although you know it, we don't get torrential downpours like that often it would be good to collect as much as we can so it can soak down into the ground and become available to the plants there also behind those barrels in there where the um, sacred basil is I've hopefully going to turn that into another um, what do they call it? Beneficial insect garden. So a lot of flowering plants and that sort of thing. Just over the back there is where I want to set up the good bug mix garden. Um, we've had one here previously. Sacred basil still going and we've got Taggart's Minuta and French marigolds down there. So those flowers will bring in some good bugs. The dill and the other bits and pieces from the mix. Um, they'll also help to bring in lacewings, hoverflies, praying mantis, that sort of thing. So it's a nice little spot that isn't really usable. It's sort of surrounded by wicking barrels down this side and the garden bed in front of it. Uh, wicking barrels. Just over the back there we have our auto top up wicking barrels and the beans in there have just been going off. We've been picking loads of beans from them and the Yakon in there as well, as well is doing rather fine. It doesn't have uh, look to have any of that infection on it so pretty pleased with that. Uh, just down here we have another barrel. That purse lane has just been hacked back for us and the chickens putting it in juices. Uh, that onion it looks to have split into three so I think we left him in there a little bit too long. Um, actually, one plan I want to show you around past the turmeric and lavender is our Kankur ginger. This is a small variety of ginger. Um, I think it's an Indonesian variety. Grows very low to the ground. Has a spectacular white and pinkish purple flower. Um, so actually there's one in there that you can't really see, but I got a photo from last year. Um, spectacular flower. Hopefully we'll have it divide enough this year that we'll be able to plant it out in a few different spots. Just over the back there we have a ghost chili um, by Jalokia that is just the fruits fallen and seeded. So um, I might see if some people want some very hot chili seedlings. Um, I don't want them, I've got enough. Just over the back there we have some lucin um, or alfalfa. That's just a leftover from the original good bug mix in there. Bit of an update on the fish farm. Everything's going well. We moved the jade perch, well we separated them between these um, two tanks. Posted a bit of a clip on that the other week. Moved the um, silver perch out. But these guys seem to be going all right. Um, they're probably not going to be too sociable because they've already been fed just before. But the water's fairly clean, fairly decent. Pretty happy with the way they're going. Um, the aquaponics, bit of a um, uh, stop work on that one. Like I mentioned before, Bianca's home, so we haven't gotten around to a lot. Um, a little bit of an update, no, not too impressed with these guys. I'll be turning them into a flood and drain system with an external um, siphon for anyone who's interested in the aquaponics. But the beds over there, they've been going fantastic. Uh, harvested a whole heap of jalapenos the other day along with some other bits and pieces from there. So yeah, pretty chuffed about the way it's going. Um, can't complain. Really do want to move these beds. Uh, we'll see if we can do it this week before Bianca goes back to work. This. Okinawan spinach has just been going gangbusters. I cannot, you know, praise this stuff enough. We've harvested loads for salads, been putting it in juices as well. Um, haven't really tried it in a lot of stir fries, but we've given probably about, oh, close to a dozen cuttings away to different people as they come around, trying to give it to everyone we can. It's got a beautiful flavour to it. I think it tastes a little bit carroty, sort of like you're eating lettuce with some carrot in it. Um, this is the best way to describe it. Down further. Okra's going well, a couple on there that probably should have been picked yesterday. Down here, we have an awesome looking turmeric flower. I really do think that these turmeric and ginger flowers are some of the most spectacular that we've ever grown. Um, I'm not big on ornamentals, but um, just the turmeric and that canker ginger flower and the gallangal as well, they really do make up for it. Very, very spectacular, I think. Bit of an update on the wicking beds. I mentioned in the last clip that we were a little bit um, unsure whether this ends bed, the top one, the six metre long one, has been compromised by roots. Uh, the way we were going to test it was we pretty much all took everything out of it, uh, except for the potato bags I cut back the other day. I need to pull them out and harvest them. And a market chilli, just up this end, that's what we call it, no idea what sort of chilli it is. Um, but we haven't had any plants as such to use up the water. Now we've filled it up three times all three times it took a heck of a lot of water to fill it up so we've pretty much all come to the conclusion roots have invaded it and have compromised the beds it is coming out and bianca and i are going to play around with a um 
auto top off IBC wicking bed system that could then be later turned into a um, flow through aquaponic grow bed system just something we're going to muck around with still talking about it this bed down the front here we thought had suffered the same fate but um, at the moment it's not very heavily planted um, just a couple of um, snake beans there you go miles self-sown um, and also some tagus minuta and we've got a chart over there and bits and pieces um, but when i stick the hose down there within 60 seconds it starts coming out the drain pipe at the other end so i know the integrity of the liner on this bed is all fine so pretty stoked about that i mean that big bed up the back there that's going to be a job and a half in itself so yeah i'm happy i'm only going to have to replace one this next bed down has the turmeric and one of the other beetroots I mentioned out the front before. Um, this one here, I think it's a Detroit, I could be wrong, but it's just one we let grow just to see if it would go to flower. We've been using the leaves ourselves and feeding them to the chooks. I mean, the root on it is nice and large, but yeah, we just didn't get a flower off it, unfortunately. Just one of those things. Uh, the other plants we have in this bed are up the other end. We have in here a couple of ginger we rescued from out the front, perpetual leeks, um, a couple of green onions in there. So this bed pretty much all isn't going to be planted out with anything else. And come the end of the season when the ginger and the turmeric get pulled up, we will be removing this bed, Bianca and I have decided. So um, we'll, we'll do probably another wicking style garden here. We're just not so, sort of sure which one we're going to do. It's just pretty much all the flattest area in the whole backyard hoop house. So we might go with uh, one of the air pruning bag ones or a Larry Hall style rain gutter. We'll just wait and see. Bianca said I had to show you this section of the garden. It's our amaranth patch. It's growing in the pavers. Last year we had the plants in the bed behind it there and yeah the seeds are just all through the pavers now and they've sprouted up so we find them great in stir fries. The, the younger leaves are nicer in salads we've found but the larger ones yeah they fry up all right. Just down here behind the chicken coop and I thought I'd show you a part of the garden you don't normally see. What we have here is our Gallingal bed. Uh, this is a wicking bed that's been set up for a couple of years now. The Gallingal died off over winter for the first time in a couple of years. I think it was because of the large Cape gooseberry we had coming out of the side of the bed there. It pretty much well just sucked all the water and the nutrients out of the system. Out the back we have our turmeric. Um, there's another standard turmeric. We've got about six or seven around the place. Um, we really do like our turmeric. So hopefully we might end up with a little bit to um, sell this year, make a little bit of pocket money, help pay for bits and pieces around the patch so I'm um, really impressed it has come on so strong. The mangoes are colouring up nicely as well, pretty chuffed with that. I thought we were going to lose a lot of them in that storm we had a few weeks ago but it looks like we're going to get more than a few trays off this thing so a couple on the chook roof, a couple around there. I think mainly we lost the ones right at the top of the tree. Um, the ones pretty much well midway to the base of the canopy are still on there so yeah, pretty chuffed about that. We've already taken 10 off, given a couple to my parents. So there you go, folks. Hope you like the look of the front patch for you guys who sent me messages wanting a bit of an update. And also out the back here, a few things I missed last time. It's starting to rain, so I better wind this up. Um, just quickly, over Christmas, I didn't get back to a lot of people's emails, personal messages and comments. Um, we've been spending time as a family over the holiday period, having a bit of a break myself. So um, yeah, I hope you understand. Uh, hopefully I'll clear the slate and I'll get back to you all this week. Um, if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions for this clip though, pop them in the comments section and yeah, hopefully I'll catch up by the end of the week. Um, I'm also going to tack on a bit of a harvest clip we did from the other night, just a couple of seconds worth of vision. But other than that, I'd like to wish you all a fantastic and healthy 2015 and I'll catch you next clip. I'm going inside. Cheers folks. Just so I give you a bit of a look at what Bianca picked tonight, we've got some mint for Mayer's tea. Got some market chilies and jalapenos, whole heap of beans, some parsley, a little lime down the back there. Also got some Okinawan spinach, some kangkong, and some paver amaranth that will go into dinner tonight. So there you go, just a bit of a look at the sort of things that we pick. Not every day, mind you. Just, you know, every couple of days we get a decent whack of food like this from the garden at the moment. Mainly because it's not so heavily planted. So all this is going into a bit of a warm beef salad, I've been told. Yes. So, really looking forward to that. Apparently I'm getting jalapeno. Woo! Cheers, folks.